What does the Bible have to say about teaching us to lose weight? <laughs> the Bible might not have the words weight loss included in the scripture, but if we actually start to take a look and dive deep into what the Bible teaches us, there is so much for us to learn from the Bible about how to lose weight without being on a diet and some stuff that's going to carry you through the journey. So today we want to share all about how the fruit of the spirit actually helped Casey and myself, my name's Ruth, helped us to actually lose the weight that we were looking to lose. Without being on a diet. That's the key, right? It is possible <laughs> to do it. We did it. And <laughs> you know, if you've been around our channel for any length of time, uh, welcome back. If you're new, welcome. So if you've been here for any length of time, you'll know that we do not like fad diets, right? Fad diets just promote an unhealthy relationship with food. They give us the opposite of freedom with food. They keep us stuck with obsessive thoughts about food. What else do they do? Well, they keep us bound. They keep us in chains and we can't really live a life of freedom. And so, the other big thing that they do is they actually cause you to gain weight. So that's right. Wah, wah, wah. In fact, <laughs> Statistics show that for every diet you try, you gain approximately three pounds. Yeah. So if you've tried six or seven diets, you've just gained 20 pounds and it's not worth it. So we fired our diets mm -hmm. a long time ago. And that's when we actually started to lose the weight for good. Yeah. <laughs> and Once and for all. You know, the thing is, that's so funny. And this is how so many things in life are. Once we get back to the basics, once we start thinking and using you know, the wisdom that, that the Bible has for us, it's not complicated, but no. we have complicated things. <laughs> and so once we get back to the basics, once we get back to seeing what the Bible is actually teaching us, they're pretty simple concepts that if we can learn how to implement them appropriately into a weight loss journey, then really, truly, it is possible to lose weight without being on a diet. And we want to share with you how we did it. But we also want to tell you and just encourage you, if you have tried all those diets and failed, it's not your fault. In fact, dieting has failed you. Mm -hmm. So today we want to get into a little bit about what the scripture says, how to treat our bodies. And I'm going to start with, you know, the fruit of the spirit, which is love. Love is a one of the fruit of the spirit that we all want to really take to heart. We need to love ourselves. And scripture does say we need to love our neighbor like ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so it means we also have to love ourselves. Loving ourselves is taking care of ourselves. Well, and the other big aspect of that too is that if we don't learn to love ourselves today, then we're not going to love ourselves after losing the weight either, right? We have to learn how to love who God created us to be right now, that doesn't mean we have to like exactly where we're at, right? We can want to be better. We can want to improve, but we still have to love who God created us to be. And then once we start that journey throughout the weight loss journey, really what we have found in working with thousands of women now through their weight loss journeys is that honestly, what we think is a journey of like wanting to lose the weight is actually a journey of learning to love who God created us to be because it's about learning to love our bodies and treat them well. And, you know, we often say, treat your body like a temple, not a trash can. It's about learning to love that God created you uniquely with a unique shape, with a unique personality, with unique and, everything. That's right. And here's a little fact. If you don't like the shape that you are, that's something that you might just have to learn to accept because it doesn't matter what your weight is, your body shape is what God gave you. Mm -hmm. And so on purpose, on purpose, <laughs> that's right. So if you're a pear shape or an apple or a triangle or inverted triangle or whatever you are, we have to learn to accept that that's the, the, the body, the structure that God gave us. And so let's try to love who he made us to be because he did it on purpose. Yeah. You were created without mistake. That's right. Yeah. And you know, another thing that comes to mind on loving ourselves is it's like when you're on an airplane and we use this analogy a lot too. The flight attendant always says you need to put on your own oxygen mask before you can help the person beside you. We have to take care of us so that we can keep continuing to care and love on those around us. Mm -hmm. It's not selfish. That's actually loving the body, mind, and soul that God gave to you in a way that is honoring to him. And that doesn't mean that you're going to be selfish and stop, you know, accomplishing the tasks in your life that need to get accomplished. But it does mean that you need to start prioritizing, taking care of your body, mind, and soul so that you can care for those around you so that you can go out and live the purpose that God has for you. So it might mean loving yourself enough 
to take yourself out for a walk. Mm -hmm. It might mean loving yourself enough to buy some extra vegetables. It might mean loving yourself enough to say, you know what, today I'm going to choose to say no to the ice cream and dessert. Exactly. And that is a perspective in your mind <laughs> that we have to learn how to shift if we want to learn to lose weight without being on a diet, because we have choices. We often feel like we don't have choice, especially when we're on a weight loss journey. We feel like, oh, I have to say no. Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. Well, that's actually not true. You have the choice to make with every decision that you make. There's consequences for both decisions, right? If you choose to have the ice cream and the dessert, that's the choice that you're making. And the consequences is that you're going to struggle to lose weight if you continue making that decision. That's and it might not feel well if you continue to do that. You also have the choice to say, no, thank you. And the consequence for that is that you might feel a little bit left out. The consequence for that is also that you might be one step further on your weight loss journey. That's a good consequence, right? <laughs> and so, loving yourself enough to maybe sometimes feel uncomfortable. Maybe you are going to be a little bit hungry at times, but maybe you're loving yourself enough to say, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, with all the women that we've worked with, that is one thing that has really been a light, light bulb moment for so many of them is that losing weight is an uncomfortable journey. We're not going to sugarcoat that for you. <laughs> Even if you're losing weight without being on a diet, it's uncomfortable, that's but right. you have to decide if you're willing to step outside your comfort zone to be uncomfortable enough to do the thing that you say you want to do. So love yourself enough to do it. So we've talked about a few practical ways that you can start to love yourself enough because it is one of the fruits of the spirit, right? But there are lots of practical things that we can do to start loving ourselves. So some of them, like we've already said, are taking yourself for yourself out for a walk. Maybe you're buying more veggies. Maybe you're saying no to the dessert. But sometimes I think the love piece has to start with the thoughts that we're thinking about ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. There's practical things, but there's also some emotional work that we need to do there too. And some, you know, mental work there that we need to do when we think about loving ourselves enough. And some of it, we already just touched on with the perspective that we have to shift the perspective of how we think about a weight loss journey. We're going to talk more about that coming up with another fruit of the spirit, but <laughs> loving ourselves from an emotional perspective, one of the ways that we always like to suggest that you do this is if you look in the mirror and you cannot see one thing about yourself that you like or love, then it's time to start on that exercise. Yeah. So what you need to do is find something. It might be, I love the color of my eyes. Maybe that's how you're going to start, mm -hmm. but look in the mirror and say something positive rather than looking in the mirror and thinking all these disgusting thoughts about yourself. Mm -hmm. That is grieving the Holy spirit. We are created in his image and he made us, you know, perfectly in his image. So mm -hmm. we have to start to be grateful and thankful about something and just start to change the perspective in our minds. And so if you don't know where to start, you know what, go do something like paint your nails and look in the mirror and say, wow, I really like my fingernails today, right? right? Start somewhere and you got to keep doing it. You got to do it over and over and over. And every morning when you get up, you got to start looking in the mirror and finding something about yourself to love because we have to learn how to love who God created us to be. That's right. And so that is just a little bit about love. And that's one of the fruit of the spirit that we want to talk about. Mm -hmm. But we're going to ask that you stick around till the end, because we're going to give you something really important to take away today. Mm -hmm. But you got to stick around till the end. But subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already. Give us a like, give us a thumbs up, give us a comment. In fact, I was going to say love on us in this channel a little <laughs> bit right now. Exactly. <laughs> And yeah, if you do subscribe and give us a like, that really helps us out. We really believe that this message needs to get out to as many women of faith as possible because we've got to start reclaiming our life, our health, and our weight so that we can go out and live the purpose that God has for us. Exactly. So we talked about the fruit of the spirit, which is love. And we're talking about, you know, how the fruit of the spirit actually helped us lose the weight. Loving ourselves was number one. Mm -hmm. What's number two? Number two is... Kind of a hard one to swallow. <laughs> Self-control. Oh boy, that's okay. a big one. Mm -hmm. Wow. And many of us, when we think about the word self-control, we automatically go like, mm, don't want to do that. I don't want to work on that one. Yeah, because it kind of in our minds means depriving ourselves, right? That's often, I think, the mental picture that we get or like, oh, what we can't do that we want to go do. But we that have to free frame self-control mm -hmm. self-control is actually a fruit of the spirit fruit is good right fruit is delicious and it looks good and when we think about you know our all our senses you know our hearing our smell our taste our touch all of that we do practice it with fruit and so 
Self-control is a good thing. We just have to reframe it to hear about the good aspect of self-control. Mm -hmm. Well, and, you know, we often say the Bible is like our blueprint for best living. And so if self-control is one of the fruits of the spirits that we are supposed to be working on in our life, then it's for our good. It's not for our harm. It's not for no. living a life of drudgery. It's for our good. So self-control is not to harm us. Self-control is a fruit of the spirit that we want to develop, that we get to de develop. Do you to hear that? We get to do it, right? right? It's all about choices. Yeah, so that we get to develop the fruit of the spirit that is going to help us in our weight loss journey. Mm -hmm. So when you said before, you know, it's about deprivation, that's what diets are. And we don't want to go back to diets. That's why we fired our diet, because we don't want to start from that feeling of drudgery and deprivation. No, we want to use self-control as a fruit, which is something that's going to really help us in our weight loss journey. And it's going to get us to our target goal. Well, and if we think about, okay, self-control as a function of weight loss, what's the Bible teaching us there? And how does it teach us to learn to live at a healthy weight without being on a diet? Because that, the Bible doesn't talk ever about being on a fad diet where we say, I'm never eating carbs again, no. right? <laughs> the Bible doesn't teach us that. And I'm not saying that, that that's wrong or sinful, but what I am saying is that if we think about self-control from a perspective of what could this teach us about a weight loss journey, it could be teaching us about portion control and moderation, right? So if Bingo. you think about <laughs> like self-control as the umbrella topic for weight loss, that means that we're going to use portion control to not overindulge because that's gluttony. And we're going to use moderation, which means that we're going to start thinking, okay, if I had ice cream and chips for lunch, then moderation would tell me that that's probably enough for today, right? Or that's probably enough for the week. That's probably enough for right now. And so if we think about self-control and then portion control and moderation are kind of the branches from that, well, what does that look like for you in your current weight loss journey? When's the last time that you used self-control or portion control and moderation with the foods that you were choosing to consume? That's right. Self-control can be used in a lot of different aspects of our life. And we're using it right now in weight loss. Okay. Because the Bible specifically talks about um, not overindulging in alcohol. Do not drink to excess. Um, it also talks about it with food. There's a yeah. verse in Proverbs that talks about honey. Do you like honey? If you do, don't eat too much or it will make you sick. That's and, right. And so we have to be really careful with our food. Honey is a food. It's a, a food group of sugar, healthy sugars, because it's honey and God made honey, but we don't want to have too much. The Bible clearly says, do not eat too much or it will make you sick. Mm -hmm. So there you go. It's for your own good, right? It's for the good of your body. It's for the good of your health. It's for the good of your mind, I'm going to say too, because we want freedom with food. And we often say that freedom with food comes because of boundaries, mm -hmm. right? That sounds kind of counterintuitive, but there's freedom when we know which boundaries we exist, exist within. And so when we create those healthy boundaries for ourselves, then we are in essence creating freedom with food because we know what we're doing. That's right. We get to choose. And the Bible specifically talks about gluttony and how we are not supposed to indulge overindulge in food mm -hmm. that is specifically a sin we don't want to do that so we have to use self-control to stop ourselves because sometimes let's face it sometimes the food is so tasty we just want more because it tastes good mm -hmm. not because our body needs it this is where self-control comes in we have to have the fruit of the spirit of self-control so that we don't get sick especially in the world that we live in today because we're just here to tell you that the foods that we are consuming in the world today have been designed to make us want more and more and more and more. And if you've been around watching any of our other videos, you might've heard this example, but I heard this one one day and my brain just went like, poof, that's so true, right? If you think about a bag of potato chips that you and I could sit down and polish off the entire thing without even thinking, after we're done it, we don't even feel full. There's been no nutritional value that our bodies have received from that. In fact, then we want to go and eat a whole meal. Right, exactly. And that bag of potato chips had like four to five potatoes in it. You just consumed four to five potatoes without feeling full. Think wow. about if you went to go boil four or five potatoes, did not add any salt, didn't add any butter, didn't add any flavoring, and you sat down and tried to eat four or five of them, 
that sounds horrible, doesn't it? <laughs> I love potatoes, but that sounds horrible. And so if you think about those two things are like the equivalent amount of food, that bag of chips and those four to five potatoes, but those potato chips have been designed to make you want to eat more and more and more, and then go back for more and more and more. And that's how most processed food is designed to cause our cravings. So we really have to be aware of what it means to exhibit self-control on our weight loss journeys for the sake of our health. Absolutely. So let's start to implement self-control. It might mean that you don't go back for seconds because your body has had enough. You might not even know when your body's had enough because you've been overindulging for too long. Like mm -hmm. our society is a society of bigger and better. A bigger means more value. We want more. And we're supersizing everything. But when we stop to think about it, that's not exercising self-control. No, exactly. And that might be value for your pocketbook, but it's not value for your body. <laughs> that's right. So let's start to think about self-control as something good for our body mm -hmm. and use it for our weight loss goals. Exactly. Okay. So you might be here and you might be like, this is wonderful information, but how do I do this practically? How do I actually lose the weight without being on a diet? And that's why we want to share with you our 10 day weigh down plan that we developed that really, we say that God gave us this plan that helped me lose 85 pounds after my first pregnancy. And then another 65 after the second one, that's 150 pounds. If you don't <laughs> know what the two mean, yeah. that's a lot of weight <laughs> and it helped you lose 20 pounds. Exactly. And so we want to share with you that we sell this plan, um, really truly for the benefit of helping women learn how to lose weight without being on a diet because it is our heart's desire to help you reclaim your weight so that you can reclaim your health and your life that's right because we want you to be able to go out and live out your purpose that god has for you to do because only you can do it exactly so check out the link in the description below there's lots more information if you click on that and if you have any questions comment below and we will answer them for you that's right so we have one more fruit of the spirit that we want to talk about right now and that is the fruit of the spirit called joy. Now, why on earth do we use joy for weight loss? Well, it is kind of humorous, but we need to have and find joy in our weight loss journey because the weight loss journey is long and hard. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy journey. And like you said before, we're not sugarcoating it. Weight loss can be a long, hard road to follow, but you can do it. It is possible. And it is possible to find joy in the journey because we're developing the fruit of the spirit. We're going out and we are developing the skills and the gifts that God has for us to use in our purpose that he has for us. Finding joy is just, you know, it's something that fills you up and helps you to understand that we can be grateful in this journey and we can still have a very good life while we're in weight loss mode. Mm -hmm. And we alluded to, to the fact a few minutes ago that we were going to talk about, um, you know, how do we change our perspective? Well, it starts here, right? We change our perspective of our weight loss journey by choosing to find joy. And it's a choice that we have to make. And I think as women of faith, as believers, you know, we've heard, you know, find joy in all circumstances. And we know that in our heads. And we think that about, most other circumstances, but we, we failed to think about that from a weight loss perspective because weight loss in our culture and in our society is just this drudgery of fad diet after fad diet that doesn't work and it just feels hopeless. And yeah. so, you know, the Bible also talks about hope, right? And so Isaiah 40 verse 31, I'm going to read it here, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. See, without that hope, our strength starts to wane. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So that we, gives us a lot of hope. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so when you've been on these fad diets after fad diet after fad diet, and you've lost all hope that it's possible to lose the weight, then it is ex not impossible, but it's extremely hard to find joy when you're in a state of hopelessness. That's right. And so what Casey and I like to do is we like to invite God into our weight loss journey each and every day. The Bible says there are new mercies every morning. And so every morning we can find joy knowing that God is going to be walking along with us in our weight loss journey. And he gives us a way of escape for every temptation. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of things to be joyful for right there. And so if we think again about how do we practically incorporate joy into our weight loss journey, what does that look like? Well, this can also look like a lot of things and you're going to have to find something that works for you. 
But one thing that we've really been working a lot with uh, the women in our membership community, we have a weight loss membership community, is that we have to learn how to have other aspects of our life that we love and enjoy and find joy in outside of food. Because for many women, their entire source of like happiness and joy and love and exhilaration and all they look forward to is food. Everything revolves around food or the table. Mm -hmm. And we have to look for more. We need joy in other things, not just in food. Exactly. So we need to learn how to put joy into our life, right? And that kind of sounds funny, but you have to have something else to look forward to in your life. You have to have something else that you can love to do that you can focus on because we want to take the power away from those obsessive thoughts about food. So that's one way. Another way to find joy is like to do a gratitude journal, right? That's right. And if you don't have things to be joyful with, start with one or two and just write them down because writing them down, you know, will start your creative juices flowing. And pretty soon you'll have 10 or 20 things to be joyful about. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that, you know, we've been talking about, how do we find joy in our weight loss journey? Well, let's pray and ask the Holy Spirit to come fill us up. That's right. right? Because he wants to fill us up. In fact, he, he calls us and he draws us to himself. And that alone can fill us up with joy. Mm -hmm. And again, if we think about a perspective shift, you know what? God is going to do a work in your life if you <laughs> surrender your weight loss journey to him. And what more is there to be joyful about than that? And you know what? Let's come back to the fruit of the spirit. We are supposed to work on developing the fruit of the spirit. So why not in our weight loss journey? Yeah. Why not surrender that journey <laughs> for the sake of growth in your spiritual life? Because, right. you know, that's really what it's about. So we wanted to leave you with one really important thing that we used in our weight loss journey. And we call them identity statements. So can you just explain what an identity statement is? Sure. So, you know, we've recently really been studying um, Craig Groeschel's new book, The Power to Change, The Power yeah. to Change, yeah. uh, and also his previous book, Winning the War in Your Mind. So Craig Groeschel, Life Church, if you're watching, thank you. <laughs> Excellent books. We would highly recommend them. We will link them below as well. Um, and, you know, some of that work is based on, and I know that Craig Groeschel has worked with um, James Clear, who is the author of Atomic Habits. They talk about how we have to create a new identity for ourselves if we want to have good, healthy, sustainable change and create new habits. And so what do you think about you? Who are you? And if we are people that are losing weight, so if I am a person who is losing weight, then I have to take on that identity right? Absolutely. That's who I am. So when we have an identity of something, so you have to make sure that you make the identity something that your brain can wrap, wrap your head around, right? Like that's truth, right? So I am a person losing weight. You and I can say that, and that can be a true, honest statement that your brain can get on board with. If you say, like, if I were to say, I am a person who weighs a hundred pounds, well, my brain knows that's not true. So that's not a good identity statement for me, right? That's so right. we always like the one, I am a person losing weight. And then the secondary part is that we have to attach the action statements to that identity of the habits that we are implementing to become more and more and more of that person who is losing weight. Yeah. So you can say something like, I am a person losing weight. A person losing weight goes out and exercises a few times a week, or you can put in there five times a week, or you can say three times a week, whatever works for you. But I am a person who exercises. I am a person losing weight. I am a person who eats vegetables. I am a person who drinks water, right? I am a person losing weight. I am a person who implements portion control and moderation I am a, oh, go ahead. In, into the decisions of about what I eat. I am a person losing weight. I am a person who is implementing healthy habits. I drink my water. Mm -hmm, exactly. So we would really encourage you to create your own identity statement and you can use ours. You can use what we just said, but repeat that to yourself. Say it over and over and over and over. And at first you're going to probably have a hard time saying it because it's hard to change our identity, right? But you got to say it over and over and over because that is you. So make your identity statement, write it down. Okay. There's power in written words. So write it down. I am a person losing weight. People like me do these things and then list the things that you will be doing and working on and start implementing those habits into your each and every day. And look at that identity statement every day. Don't put it away. So you don't see it, have it there handy so that you can repeat it and it gets into your mind. Mm -hmm.
So we just really want to thank you for being here, watching this video. Like we already said, please like it. Please subscribe to our channel and comment below. Let us know which fruit of the spirit resonated with you the most on your weight loss journey. I guess it might be self-control. And if it's a different one, let us know that too, because we can develop all the fruit of the spirit. Exactly. But we always like to end by saying until next time, treat your body like a temple, not, not a, a trash, trash can. can.